All right, let's see if we can get this going. Bear with me. Uno momento. As I get this in the cradle, and is it going to hold it? I've been struggling lately trying to get this thing to work. Looks like we're lined up. All right, cool. So uh, take two. <laughs> so what I'm going to talk about today is case knives. Now, you've heard me be very negative about case knives before, and for good reason. You know, we talk a lot about the Chinese. I'm still, some of my highest gross in videos are the ones about, you know, talking about Chinese clones and stuff. And a lot of people get their noses out of joint because, well, the Chinese are this and the communists and that. Yeah, whatever. We buy their shit. They buy our stuff. For every one of us, there's four or five of them. They buy a lot more of our stuff. So if we took this isolationist approach of only buy American because of America, well, if China says, well, only buy Chinese because of China, we would be far more hurting than they would. <laughs> So we would do ourselves no favors. I like that China's producing high quality value knives. That's challenging the companies like Ch uh, Case and others to step up their game. Because America does have nice higher end knives. We've got our Microtechs, we've got our Heretics, we've got Chris Reeve, you know, we got, but they're all expensive knives. America can make either really good stuff, which you pay through the nose for, I don't have a problem with that. I've spent at least four or five grand on American knives. But, and we do cheap knives. America does typically not do value knives. And there is a difference. A $50 knife is not a value knife unless it's a good knife, unless it's quality, unless the quality control is good, the materials are good, the execution is good. That's value. Just being $50, if it's loose and wobbly and the steel doesn't hold an edge and, you know, the grind is horrible and the scales are cracked, it doesn't, it, it's not value. There's no value in it. It's just cheap. And so America is really good at doing high-end quality for a price, or we can do cheap crap. There's no real middle ground that I can see. Hopefully that will change. You know, Japan didn't used to be our friend, right? They, were, they attacked us, right? Pearl Harbor, largest attack in U.S. history, killed thousands of people and pulled us into a world war. And, you know... It, it, it got so bad that in order to end the war and get out, um, you know, the U.S. is the only country in human history to nuke another country, both before and since. So when the U.S. auto makers were under siege from Japan in the 70s and 80s, everyone was like, oh, you don't buy this Jap crap and buy American, buy American. Well, Japanese were making a better car, 30% cheaper. They were more reliable. They had better features. They were better put together. They broke down less. And in the end, it, it did hurt the U.S. auto industry, but in the end, it also forced us to step up our game. It said, look, if we're going to survive, we got to compete. If we got to compete, we got to do a better job of making better designs, make them more reliable, price them competitively, or we're going to continue to get our lunches eaten by the Japanese until we are no more. And we learned that lesson. So that combination from a former enemy of ours that attacked us and everyone was anti-Japanese ended up likely saving the U.S. auto industry. So I look at knives and other things and say, look, we already learned this lesson once. I have nothing against the, the Chinese knives. A lot of them are really good. Their quality control is great. I have one case until I bought these that we're going to talk about where this is a pretty good example of what I would like to see from case. This is by far the exception where it's got no proud pins. They haven't walked out. The transitions are spot on. The polish job is spot on. Um, there's no cracks. The blade wobble, while more than I like, isn't terrible. There was some blade wrap. I had to put a, put a piece of leather down in there. So every time I closed it and it snapped shut, it was dinging the blade. And they're like, their solution is, well, just keep sharpening and eventually you'll remove enough material that, you know, you'll, you'll wear past that. And it's like, well, now I'm on the thicker part of the blade. It's not, you know, I don't want to have to grind away the blade to fix a design flaw. That said, I had to go through a bunch of knives, and all my other case knives that I had, I gave away. This is the only one I had left, and I'd pretty much given up on case, because I'm like, yeah, they're collectible, yeah, everyone talks about case, an American icon, American made by American craftsmen, when most of their knives, not all, most of them are crap. Your $70 case, on average, will get spanked by a $40 Chinese knife. The Chinese knife is better materials, better execution, better quality control. Any of the knives I've bought that are Chinese, and I've gone through a lot of them over the years, 
if they were a name brand, we, Savivi, Artisan, CJRB, Vostid, Rough Rider Reserve, you know, the, the uh, Ruki, uh, Reich, Riat, um, the James brand, which is an American company, but made over there. My Jack Wolf Knife is made in China. I've never had to go through a box, a bundle of them to pick out the good one. This is what I have to do to get a good case. I will not buy a case off the internet. Never. Don't care how cool it looks. I will not buy it because I know I have maybe, if I'm lucky, a 1 in 10 chance of getting a good one that's not broken from the factory, that doesn't have blades rubbing. It's not crooked. And when you, when you, it's, you know, the blade centering is horrible and it smacks into the bolster every time you close it. The blades wobble too much. It's just got play in it. I will not buy a knife, which is why I buy from... Old Town Cutlery over and coming. It's like over there, Lee's there, the owner. I say, hey, what's up? What are you looking for? And I'm like, I want to look at some of the cases, but I don't, don't just hand me one. I, I want to go through them. He's like, good, let's open up all the boxes. Let's find one that you like. And that's what I have to do with these. I would never have to do that with the GEC. Um, I've got this Queen Cutlery over here. I did uh, go through a couple just to find the one that I want that had a really good tight lockup and no wobble and stuff, but they seem pretty good. I've never had to do that with a Rough Rider Reserve. There. Great out of the box. Other than the one last one I bought where the blade, the pen blades weren't sharpened as much as I would want. And I just, I, to, I, I tweaked them out, you know, and I just ran them over a stone real quick and then uh, uh, put them over the uh, strop. But I said, there's two designs that I really like and I want to check out, but I need to play with them. He's like, dude, here, we got out the table. And boom, we just got a whole bunch of each and said, here, let's open them up and go through them and see which one you like. That's awesome. I love when a knife shop does that for you because I want you to be happy, right? And, and they always want to do that. So we'll start with the little guy. So there was two that I wanted to see. And one is the mini sod buster. Paid $67 for it. There's the model number and everything from Old Town Cutlery. And I'll, I'm just giving them a plug. They don't give me anything. Uh, just a great knife shop that I respect a lot. So I'll give them some free press. They also do online orders, so you don't have to live local to them. So I got this little mini sod buster, and I went through three of them, I think, to find one that I liked. And I wanted the one that was in blue jigged bone, but honestly, I couldn't find one that didn't have blade wobble and wasn't crooked and things like that. This one was nearly perfect. So this is the mini sod buster. Very light, very gentlemanly. Um, it's in the, their stainless, whatever they call, True Sharp. The blade is... Just uh, two and seven eighths with a two and a half inch cutting. So just enough to almost get your hand on it. It's a nice thin little gentleman knife. It is a slip joint, but it's got a nice stiff spring. Now this one needs to loosen up a little bit. It's not, you can feel the, see how it's not really snapping from up here because there's more friction here because this one was peened a little tighter. I'm fine with that. That will wear in. The other ones were all like wobble. This has no blade wobble to it. Like that's a nice tight fit. That is perfect. While it'll need to smooth out as the steel wears on the brass liners and smooths out, gets any burrs off and wears out just a little bit of metal, that will loosen up. But that is really nice. Um, the tip on it's not very sharp, so it's not going to be great for piercing, but the edge on it's pretty good. Um, I mean, it feels good. Let's find out if it's any good. Yeah, yeah, cuts nice and easy out of the factory, so not bad at all. Really nice little knife. Um, I don't have a scale here, but I think it weighs around, it only feels a little bit more than a, than a bug out, so it's probably around like two ounces, 2.1, 2.2, something like that. So it's a little itty bitty knife. It's not a beast like this thing, my queen uh, big trapper, which is a great knife. Very big though, very heavy in the pocket, but it's a cool knife. So I went through everything and I got this one and picked it out. I really wanted the blue, but the red looks really good. I mean, you can see the detail on that, hopefully. It's a really nicely made blade. This is what I would expect for a $67 case knife. This is value. But the other four that were there were not. Actually, it was probably more than that between the blue and the red. They had two different colors that I was interested in. Didn't like the stag. Um, so out of the ones there, this was the only one that, I, that was what I expected. Now, for other people that aren't going to use it, they just collect case knives. You might not care about that kind of stuff. But that is the problem with case, is that if I'd gone there, I wouldn't have to say, well, let me look through your Civivi Elementums. 
I know that every one of those is going to be spot on. I know it. They always are. There's, yeah, I mean, there could be the one that slipped through the cracks somehow. But on those Chinese brands, the quality control is always there. They're, everything's done with CNC machines. The, 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 the edges are nicer. It's just they're better put together. But this is a good example of a case. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, case has redeemed itself a little bit. They can make a good knife. They just usually don't. That's my problem with Case. That being said, let's go look at the second one. What else did we get yesterday? I got a Case CA11013 Hunter in blue maple. Dyed, obviously, because maple's not normally blue, I don't think. Uh, also from Old Town Cutlery, paid 100 bucks for this guy. And this one actually really impressed me. Very nicely put together. Blade centering, mm, not awesome. Now, I've seen a way to correct that. Um, you don't want to try to bend the blade because you might overbend it and snap it. I've seen someone take the blade like this, put it on a mat that's on wood or something that can't scratch, make sure it's clean, there's no grit, something that can't scratch that. And you take a wooden dowel, place it right there, and tap it a bit with a hammer. And you're slowly just bending that just a little bit so that when it closes, It'll be there. And you don't have to bend it much here to make a one millimeter difference out here. Here, it's not actually rubbing on the, the bolster. And it's brass, so it shouldn't mark up the blade. But you can do that if you want. In any case, so this one is a bit bigger. What I like about it, though, is it's really thin. For like a nice full-size knife, I wouldn't mind if it was a lockback. Uh, but this one, you've got a four-inch clip-style blade, clip point. And the cutting edge is about 3.65 or so. So nice, nice bit of belly there. It's a fairly thin blade out to the tip. So, you know, I wouldn't do a lot of prying with that, but you shouldn't be doing that with a knife anyway. A little pointier uh, out of the box. Yeah, pretty sharp for a case. Not as sharp as some of the knives I've had. Um, fairly thin, lightweight. Now, this one does weigh a bit more, but honestly, it actually, all right, surprisingly, it feels like it weighs less than the Trapper. The Trapper's thicker. The Trapper's got two steel springs. The blades are actually each a tiny bit thicker than that, and you got two of them. So, for its size, this is fairly light. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, so what you've got here is, you know, you got your case shield, although it always looks weird to see it upside down like that, but I guess when it's laying like that, it would be right side up. I always feel like the shield should be... Now, it just looks weird to me that they do it that way, and they did it the same way on here. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, just personal uh, preference. But you've got a really nice kind of long blade. Um, it's thin. This should be a great slicer. I mean, it's a hunting type knife, but if you wanted a large slip joint, so as long, you know, if you, have, if you live in an area where you can't carry a locking blade, but they're okay with the blade length, because it's like, well, it's a traditional knife. Yeah, you wouldn't want to necessarily use it for defense because you wouldn't want to do a lot of stabbing because that could close on your fingers, right? If you stabbed into something, but it's got a pretty strong lock. This has no almost no blade wobble. You can't feel that hard rock. You feel the blade flexing, but you don't hear, you don't feel that hard when you have blade wobble like you have on, on this. But the wood, beautiful. The pins, not proud. I mean, I could feel that one a tiny bit, but nothing there. The transitions, excellent. I wouldn't say perfect. They're not as good as the Rough Rider Reserve, but it's 90% there. Uh, which is high praise. Rough Rider Reserves are really nicely made knives. Don't care that they're from China. Ignore it. If no one told you it was made in China, you would not know it. You'd go, this is like a $125 knife. And you're like, no, it's $49. Um, you would not know that. Um, but the edge seems good. Oh, it's very toothy, but that's, you know, some people like a nice mirror polished. Uh, a toothy, you know, Benchmade's come pretty toothy as well. So... I might strop that and just clean it up a little bit. But the toothiness, the toothiness, if you're cutting through rope and stuff, gives it like mini micro saw edges, you know, like serrations. So there's, it doesn't maybe slice paper as nice sometimes because the little teeth catch a little bit if you're going slow. 
But if you were cutting meat or skin or um, rope or something, then that little bit toothier um, is actually better than being micro polished and perfect. You know, that's just how it works. So you you won't cut paper as well, but you know, what are you using a knife for? You just worried about slicing paper or are you actually using it to get shit done? <laughs> so keep that in mind. But I will say, you know, for the case, I've been I've been dogging case a lot lately. And it's because I know they can do good work. The problem is that they usually don't. And you have to go the extra mile to go to a sh either just buy it off the internet and you roll the dice and you hope you get a good one and more often than not you won't or you got to go to a nice knife shop that'll let you open them up the case and and you know take them out and play with them and see uh you know how you like them i did that thank you lee as always great people to deal with over there um but I got two really good ones, you know? I got ones that were up to now, this has been my nicest case, but that does have a little bit of blade wobble. But I kept this one because I really like it. It's got a nice sharp blade. Once I put the leather in there, it's no longer getting dinged on the damn, uh, on the, the, the spring housing. Um, and this has been beautifully executed. I mean, the transitions on this are fantastic. There's no cracks. Prints are proud. Everything's polished properly. The fit and finish is excellent with minimal blade wobble. It's been a fantastic knife. I like this knife a lot. I love the way it looks. I like the way it feels. This is value. It's quality and it's value. It's not just a cheap knife at $70. This is a value knife. This is how it should be done, Case. And I know you can do it because I got three of them here that you did it on. But I had to go through nine of those to get the good one. And a bunch of other Case knives I've had, I've since gotten rid of because none of them that I ordered over the internet were good. And I ordered them from Case. I didn't go from some, you know, secondhand or whatever. I got them from Case's website. And one of them I sent back for a warranty uh, because the pins were cracked and, and, and the pin kept popping out. And I'd push it back in and then after a day it'd pop out again. I sent it to them. They sent me a new one, but the blade was, and it was executed better, except the blade had so much wobble in it. Now, some people that doesn't bother. I think I gave it to my uncle. He, you know, he didn't mind that bit of wobble. It was a brand new, very nicely looking uh, stag handled uh, stockman. So it was a good knife, but I'm looking at it, you know, it's like I, I, I've gotten so spoiled on either the nicer knives or the Chinese knives that when I get a blade that's wonky and rubbing or, or you know, whatever, yeah, it'll still open an Amazon package just fine. But to me, it's like when you've had better for less money, you kind of resent getting one that isn't up to those standards. So Case can do a good job. No blade wobble. Nice and tight. Beautiful. Nice, nice blade. Good polish job. Nice job here. Nothing snagging and catching my thumb. Sometimes you get the head of that, I'll catch your thumbnail. This is really well done. Same thing here. It's beautiful. This is what I would expect from a $100 knife. Case can deliver. But Case, if you're watching this, step up your game, dude. <laughs> you, I know you can do quality work. The problem is I had to go through nine of those to get the one good one. I had to go through four or five to get the good one. I had to go through uh, two or three of these to get the good one. And that was just out of what they had. I could have easily just not liked any of them. But when you have to go through all those knives, as opposed to I can go on right now on Amazon and buy a Rough Rider. I could go buy a Vosteed Raccoon. I could go buy a knife from CGRB, Artisan, Civivi, any of those brands and I don't have any concerns that when I open that box, I'm going to be disappointed. I cannot say the same for case. I will not buy a case knife unless I can go in and I can play with it and sit there and really look at it and feel it and see if the person who did the knife knew what they were doing or cared to do the job right. And it's by far the exception that they do the right thing. So can you get a good case knife? Are they okay? Yeah, if you get to cherry pick it out of the lot. And I did, and I'm very happy with these. These are going to be nice little additions. This is a great little, I mean, I don't know how often I'm going to carry the full-size Hunter, honestly, just because of its size, and you pull that out in the supermarket to cut the tag off something or whatever, people are going to be like, what the hell? But little guy like that, real small, discreet gentleman's knife? Oh, yeah, I like this mini sod buster. It's very smooth. It's got good ergos. Everything's rounded and beveled. There's no hard edges. Like it's it's on the small size for my hands, but that's a cool little elegant traditional knife. 
I like that a lot. I really do like this. It's just, you know, it's, it's a bit big. <laughs> I mean, that's a big honking knife. But it's cool. I definitely like it. I'm digging it. And so far on these, no blade wrap that I can see on the edge. I don't see it hitting that back spring, so that's good. You know, the, the, the Rough Rider Reserves put a stop pin in there that goes through the holes in the liner so it's secure and anchored in place, and the stop pin hits that edge right there, right there, so you never get the blade wrap. Here they don't, but honestly, that's good. That's two case knives in a row where I don't seem to be getting blade wrap. And if I did, I'd just put a little tiny piece of leather down in there to cushion it. You wouldn't see it because it's down inside there, but... Really impressed with these two. I just wish that all the case knives came out of the box and had the same attention to detail. Unfortunately, they don't. So if you live in the area, go over to Old Town. They'll let you handle them and find the good ones as opposed to ordering online and you get the luck of the draw. So anyway, that's my, that's my update on case knives. I've been very negative about them. I'm still negative about them in general. But when you get a good one, credit where credit's due. It's a good one. And these three have been excellent. So we'll talk to you guys later.